Alrighty, so 4-7 is the next section, and we're on change of basis, which is by far, like, one of the most confusing sections of the book. Uh, this one, and then I think 6-1 and 6-5, just for some reason, just confuse the crap out of kids. Um, so let's talk about change of basis. And again, I'm only going to show you how to do a change of basis problem. We're going to use two methods. Method one is going to be the old fashioned way and method two, I'm going to use a slighter shortcut. So let's see if I can squeeze both into one video. I think we'll be fine. So actually I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to split. Hmm. We'll see. Let's do this one first. So change of basis. What do we got? So I've got this problem. It's a four, seven, 21 from the textbook. So your vector space is equal to P one R and then your basis B is 7 minus 4x comma 5x and then your basis C is 1 minus 2x comma 2 plus x and you want to find PBC or it's called uh, or the book might write it like this oh, whoops PBC C. Okay, so what does this mean? It's okay. So what does all of this mean? So I'm in a vector space. All right, V is my vector space. Uh, it's P1R. So you should be familiar with this notation, but P1R just means all polynomials with degree one or less. So we're talking like 2x plus 4, uh, just the constant 3, 13x minus. 256 like those are all in p1r okay and b then is a basis for p1r which means that i can express any polynomial in terms of this basis right which means like for example the polynomial 7 plus x is equal to 1 times 7 minus 4x plus 1 times 5x right so here's a basis and here's a basis element and in basis b this is actually equal to one comma one in basis b right and that's because this one goes here and this one goes there right so this is kind of kind of difficult to wrap your head around um so what so what is it what is change of basis then? Well, let's say I have this this matrix seven plus x uh, or this polynomial seven plus x. What if I wanted to express it in terms of c instead? What is seven plus x in terms of what times one minus two x plus what times two plus x? I know in b it's one comma one, but in c I don't know what that is, right? So. This is what a change of basis matrix does. It essentially, a lot, it, it helps us find a matrix that I can take this matrix and then I'll multiply one one by it, and then that'll give me this answer right here. It'll give me these guys right there. Okay, so that's what a change of basis matrix does. So now, how do we find it? Um, so. We're going to do it the, the long way. So step one is to realize, okay, I need to take any, wait, I need to take any, uh, I need to take each basis element here and I actually need to express it in terms of C. So what does that mean? So I need to take seven minus four X. Okay. And seven minus four X is equal to then some constant j1 times 1 minus 2x plus some constant j2 times 2 plus x. All right. And I want to find what j1 and j2 are. Likewise, I need to, uh, likewise, I need to take the second basis element, 5x. All right. And I need to take 5x, and that is equal to then k1 times 1 minus 2x plus k2 times 2 plus x. All right. And I would like to find what k1 and k2 are so how do i do this well then here's step two and let's turn 
these guys into matrices so then we can solve a system of equations using matrix using a matrix right and this is exactly is exactly what we're doing uh, each individual row is actually a system of equations you might not realize that but we'll show it here so what do I want to do well okay so I want to take 7 minus 4x right and I want to express that as a column vector so how I'm going to do that then is I'm going to write 7 and negative 4 where this first entry represents what's multiplying 1 and the second entry represents what's multiplying x and why 1 and x well the reason why I choose 1 and x here is because I want to express these guys in because 7 minus 4x right now is expressed in terms of the standard basis of polynomials all right which is 1 and x and if you were in let's say p4 it'd be 1 x, x squared, x cubed, and x to the fourth, right? But since we're in P1 only, I only express it in terms of 1 and x, all right? And that's then equal to 1 minus 2, right? Because 1 minus 2x is 1 times x minus 2 times x. And then 2 plus x or 2 plus 2, 1 times j1 j2 and if you multiply this right hand side out you're gonna see that you get exactly what you get here you get exactly what you get on the right hand side right there just multiply it out believe me 100% works so that means I have a system of equations right and so this then I want to solve for j1 and j2 so now I just do 1 2 negative 2 1 7 negative 4 right I have an augmented matrix and a reduce 1, 2, 0, 5, 7, 10. Okay, what I do, bottom plus 2 times the top, right? And I can see here immediately that J1, whoa, <laughs> J2 is equal to 2. And then J1 must equal 3 then. All right, so then J1, J2 is equal to three two all right let's keep that in mind j1 j2 is equal to three two all right uh we do the same thing with five x well five x is zero five right again remember this is one and this is x that's equal to well it's also one negative two two one but this time i'm multiplying k1 k2 right so i do my augmented matrix 0, 5, all right, do reduction, and get 1, 2, 0, 5, 0, 5, so I get then J, or K1, K2, is equal to negative 2, 1, all right, and now what do I do? Well, now is step 3, which means I find what my change of basis matrix is, and PBC is just equal to then 3, 2, which comes from this guy, okay? And then t negative 2, 1, which comes from this guy. And the reason why I have to put J1, J2 in is because J1, J2, J1, J2 goes with 7 minus 4x, and 7 minus 4x is the first basis element. All right, it's listed in B as the first guy. So you order actually is really important, okay? If I switch these guys, that's wrong, all right? Don't switch the order. Um, so then negative 2, 1, right, corresponds to uh, 0, 5, and since 0, 5, uh, or 5x, and since 5x comes second, then, yeah, then it then negative 2, 1 has to come second, right? So this is PBC, and what does that mean? Well, that means, right, up here in this example, look, 7 plus x was equal to 1, 1, right? Well, what is 7 plus x in terms of this basis? What is 7 plus x in terms of this basis C, right? And I'm going to claim that 7 plus 1, 7 plus x in terms of C 
is just PBC times 7 plus X written in terms of B. All right. And here is 7 plus X written in terms of B. It's 1, 1. So then 7 plus X in terms of C is equal to, so we write this 7 plus X in terms of C like that, is equal to 3, negative 2, 2, 1 times 1, 1. And that gets me 1, 3. And if you don't believe me, let's check it out. What is 1 times 1 minus 2x plus 3 times 2 plus x? Well, this is equal to 1 minus 2x plus 6 plus 3x. And when you look at that, I get 7 plus x, right? And so that's exactly what I wanted. So the change of basis matrix allows me to express a vector in terms of one basis, which is seven plus X in terms of B, which remember this was one, one from above. And now I can express it in terms of another basis by taking the change of basis matrix PBC and multiplying it by seven, uh, by a vector in terms of B, right? Which this happens to be seven plus X in terms of B. And now I get my result. 7 plus x in terms of c. So that's what the change of basis matrix does. This is really important. This is the long way to do it. All right. Someone really clever would have realized, oh, wait, this matrix and this matrix, they're the same thing. And we actually can do both steps in step two at once. So we can do both parts of step two in one step. Uh, yeah, that's what I'll talk about next video because this one's running a bit long. So we'll do one more change of basis matrix problem and then we'll move on to the next section, which is row space and column space, which is pretty, pretty quick. That'll be a pretty quick video in 4.8. But then again, one more video coming up in 4.7.